Hello everyone, this is JD Calderon and this is Indie Comics Explained and this week I'm taking a look at a very large read pile <laughs> that I've put together. It's a bunch of books that I've read over the last two to three weeks. But on top of these books we have The Oswald Chronicles 1, 2, and 3 which is currently being featured on Kickstarter and Indiegogo. So if you want to check them out, these are the first three issues to Passing Queens Making Homes. And the only thing that's really new about them is that uh, I have these swanky new covers by Donnie H. and Carlos Moreno. So if you want to check them out, like I said, help support, you know, an independent creator, <clears throat> that's where you go. So I will leave some links and let's check out some books for today. Doc Frankenstein, which I already did a review of. Fantastic book. This is by the Wachowskis and... Steve Scrooge, excellent artwork, just gorgeous looking work. I mean, this, like, <laughs> this book's on par with anything and probably beyond anything that Marvel and DC is currently putting out. Like, this is the type of book where you could tell it's two people who have, in the Wachowskis, that they have a lot of money and they threw it at the project. And it is fantastic looking. And they think they, they could pay the artists enough money. They could take their time to do top-notch work. Even though I, I've seen Steve Scrooge's work. I don't think he would do anything but. But fantastic, fantastic book. We have The Orphans, Volume 4. Another fantastic book. This is the fourth and final volume in this story of these kids who come from Earth where they... Where something happens and a good portion of the population is destroyed, they're attacked, they're led to believe they're attacked by aliens. And these children are trained to be super soldiers and they're like the best of the best. And it's just a small group. That's why they call the orphans. All of these kids, their parents died during this attack. And it's a lot of fun. The stuff they find out about themselves and the things that are revealed about the people who run the government. And all these different things, conspiracies. I mean, it's it's a very good series. There's four four issues, four volumes. This is the fourth volume. I believe they're all uh, Italian, either Italian or Spanish. I don't know. But very great books, a lot of fun. Birthright. This is number eight. It's by Image Comics. Great book. This is um, is it? Is it Jason Williams is the writer? Let's see. No, Joshua Williams along with Andre Bresson doing the art and Adriano Lucas doing the colors. I mean, this is just a great book. Like I said, this is up to volume eight. I don't know how much longer this series is going to run. It feels like a conclusion is probably close. Probably within the next ten issues or so, I would imagine. But I just do hope there will be a conclusion. I do think that's where it's leading. But it is a fantastic book. The only reason I, I'm looking forward to conclusion is because I would like the current story to be finished. Is, is If there's more with the characters, so on and so forth, that's great. But I would like the current story to be finished. I do like the series that really end. But this is a fantastic book. Middle West, Scotty Young, Jorge Corona. Again, another great book coming out of Image. As far as indie books go, like, some of the best books are just coming out of Image. And it's... There was a time when these books were coming from all over the place. Uh, it just seems now most of the best stuff is coming out of Image. That doesn't mean there's not good stuff coming from other areas, but they're just the ones producing the best stuff. I mean, case in point, we have Witchfinder, which is a great book. This is coming out from Dark Horse. This is Mike Mignola, but Mike Mignola and his crew, these guys are like a world unto themselves. They're always producing great stuff. And these books are just always fantastic. You know, these, I mean, I just love these books. This book is hardcover, and it covers probably, I don't know, the first 20 issues of this thing. Well, it's 400 pages, so that just gives you an idea. It's a great book, Witchfinder, Sir Edward Gray. Section Zero, this is another image book. Kessel Grammar, I did a review on this one. Like I said, this is a very funny book. This I love this book. It's very strong, pen and ink type style. Chodoscuro, like this is really old school, 70s, 80s Marvel style, and I love it. 
you know, and I and I really appreciate the fact that they're doing something different with it. It's not just you know your basic superhero stuff, but there's a lot of tropes running on in there. But it's a lot of fun. Gideon Falls, good book. Jeff Lemire, Andrea Sorrentino, and Dave Stewart. I only have one complaint about this book, and that is as I get older. Because unfortunately, I'm not getting any younger, but that's case in point with everybody. Fonts start to become a thing for me. This font is pretty small and fairly delicate. It's very thin. For my eyes, for the sake of my eyes, I prefer something a little bolder, maybe even a little larger. If you can see, there's a lot of space in a lot of these panels where... These bubbles could have been made just a little bit bigger. And the fonts in them could have been made just a little bit bigger. And maybe something just a little bit bolder as far as the fonts. Other than that, the story is fantastic. I mean, it's great stuff. Jeff Lemire is incredible. And the artwork is really good. It's very interesting looking. You know, great stuff. Uh, there's already several volumes. I think this is the first. Well, this is the first volume. I believe there's three volumes total that are out currently. I'll pick the other two up. Great stuff. So it's going to be interesting to see that. The Fourth Planet. This is one of these books. This come up, came up by Chapter House. Um, I didn't know what to expect. I ordered a bunch of books from Chapter House. They have a bunch of indie books. And I have to say, I really enjoyed this. I thought this was a, a lot of fun. Very interesting. It's about some humans crashing on some uh, some world these humans are on the run they were they just won some kind of galactic battle with some oppressors and they had just won their freedom they were a bunch of slaves and they they just won but they crashed in this different world and now they're embroiled in this war with these um, aliens you know the natives of this world now the thing about the alien, uh, the, the the natives of this world is they're the two class, they're two different types. One of them is fairly large, probably the size of like a horse, and then the other ones are kind of tiny. They're like probably come up to a purse mid thigh, maybe you know, and they're kind of small, but they're very deadly. <laughs> the artwork in here, it's a very rough. Well, I wouldn't say rough. It's just very unfinished type of style. I mean, the the guy is. It, it's probably not as refined as I would like. It's a very interesting style. But like I said, I, for me personally, I would like to see it be a little bit more refined, a little bit more defined. You can tell the guy has a lot of skill, but he, he's probably working a, a little a little bit fast on, on the uh, on the project. But I really enjoyed this book. I'm looking forward to the second book. So hopefully, hopefully that'll come out. We're going to save the boys for last. All right, Black Hammer, Age of Doom, Part 2. By the looks of it, this is probably the last book in the current series. I'm pretty sure Jeff Lemire will have more. I like this book a lot. I was I enjoyed all of them. This is volume four of this series. And this kind of brings the story kind of to an end. Like I said, I'm hoping to see more of these characters. But again, this was a lot of fun. Always enjoy these books. Great stuff. This is uh, Pacific Rim Amara. This is Legendary Comics. Now, this is a prequel to the second Pacific Rim movie, which wasn't very good. But I enjoyed the comic. I thought it was fun. It gives some context to the young girl who starts off at the beginning of the movie and her and the robot that she's building. So, yeah, this. Or the Jaeger. It's kind of like a mini Jaeger that she's building. And it just puts it all into context. I like the style. It's very interesting. It's a nice style. But, yeah. I mean, if you liked... The first Pacific Rim movie was awesome. The second one, it's not that great. I mean, it's okay. Um, you know, the design work and the monsters are a lot of fun. But the story just kind of fell apart somewhere. But this does lead into that. And adds a little context to it. It's fun. It's a good book. I really enjoy it. Claws. There have been several of these books that Grant Morrison and Dan Moore have done over the years. I've enjoyed those books. Those books have come out in hardcover. This is a one-shot. 
and it's kind of like the 30 days of Christmas or the 31 days of Christmas and it's just full page double page splashes of uh, claws as life and just stuff and I want to go through it completely and show off everything but it's just a lot of double splash pages beautiful artwork I mean I love Dan Moore's stuff I would have preferred a story <laughs> of some form but that's what we got but I mean it's, it's worth having it's a beautiful book I mean I, like I said Dan Moore is just incredible I, I would like to see him I know he's currently working at DC I think he's still floating back and forth between DC and boom but I would love to see him do fantasy work you know something more along those lines I think him doing things like Green Lantern and Justice League is just a waste I think the superhero stuff that's currently being done is, is relatively, some of it's good. You know, you have people out there that they're doing the best they can. And they, they're creating the work that they're creating. And I just find a lot of it to be soulless. So, but this is a lot of fun. Fantastic artwork. Like I said, Dan Moore, great, great artist. Now, The Boys. This is Omnibus Volume 5. Save this one for last. I just finished this last night. This is the book that I probably would have liked to have read maybe two books, two volumes before this one. Because it finally puts in context the motivations behind Butcher's actions as to why he's doing the things, why he hates the superheroes so much, why he hates uh, the lead... Uh, superhero so much and it just puts a lot of that into context it's a great book it's a lot of there's a lot of going on when I first started reading it the one thing I felt it, it felt like a bit of a slog there's not a lot that goes on there's not a lot of action there's just a lot of talking but <clears throat> it puts the whole thing in context it's explaining a lot of stuff I think if if Grant um, Grant Morris if Garth Ennis <coughs> had shown us instead of told us, this volume would have been twice the size. Sometimes, you know, they, they always say in writing, you know, show it, you know, don't tell it. For the simple reason that it's just more interesting to show things rather than to tell them. But sometimes as a shorthand, you have to tell something. You have to tell a story and sometimes it's just a shorthand. I mean, I guess he wanted to finish, the, he wanted to bring this series to an end. It ends at 75 issues, it's a good long run. And like I said, but towards the end of the book, it gets really interesting where Butcher finds himself, I guess at his father's funeral or wake and he ends up sitting there just talking to his father's corpse and basically telling him his life and everything that's going on and how much he despises his father and everything that went on with his life and why he's doing the things he's doing and what motivates him. And I have to say, it's truly horrifying. And one of the things, all right, so I'll let everybody know right now. Spoilers. So if you haven't seen the TV show or even read this book... I'm going to let you right now. I'm going to spoil it for you. So you might want to duck out now. It's interesting to see the differences between this and the TV show. In the TV show, Butcher's convinced that the lead hero... And I always forget his name, which is why I'm looking over here. But the lead hero... He in in the show he is convinced that he murdered his wife and somehow ditched the body. In this story, it's the exact well it it's it's different in that in this story, the lead hero who's actually a villain he's quite horrible. He raped his wife. 
his wife got pregnant and was subsequently killed by the superpower child that she was impregnated with. So at three months, I guess the, the child started growing much faster. And it had super strength and it had these powerful laser beams. It literally cut itself out of its mother or ripped, it, ripped, her, ripped its way out. Almost killed Butcher. And he killed the child. And then he finds out afterwards, you know, exactly what happened. And I have to say, it, it, it's it's a very powerful <laughs> motivator. It's very interesting. Whereas in the TV show, at the end of the series, he finds out that his wife actually had an affair with the superhero, was pregnant, and she fled. She went with the company of Vought International, whatever it's called, so that they would help her through the pregnancy. And they basically did just that. They helped her through the pregnancy. They set her up in a nice little house, put her out somewhere in the middle of the country uh, with this child. And this is what uh, is revealed to Butcher at the end of the se of the uh, season. So it's very interesting to see how the two creative teams are going uh, completely different, how Garth Ennis approached it and how the, the guys from the TV show are approaching it. So it's going to be really interesting to see season two and see how they continue to roll with the series. So, yeah. These books are really, really good. I've, I've been really enjoying them. I got one more volume, volume six. I got it. It's in my read pile. It'll be coming up in the next few weeks, I hope. Anyway, thank you, guys. If you like what you heard, please hit subscribe and like. Go check out the uh, Kickstarter and the Indiegogo for the Oswald Chronicles. And I will be talking to you guys soon. You have a great night. Share out the video. And I'll be talking to you soon. Have a good night.